When I was growing up, my mother was much more forthcoming about all this stuff than my father. My mother would uh, be walking down the street with me or something, you know, when I was a little kid, and she'd have to get to the bathroom, or the toilet, as you say here, and she'd start dragging me off, and while we were running to get home in time for her to get to the toilet, she'd be saying, and then when she was in Auschwitz, uh, you know, they'd, they'd beat her up if they, or kill her if they saw her uh, pissing except at the right moment when you're allowed to do such things, so her friends had to form a circle around her in a field so she could kind of be hidden and do that. And I didn't have any context for stories like that. It was just like, what the hell? And um, my father pretty much wouldn't say much of anything to me directly, but I learned some of the stories by um, his playing gin rummy with his friends, and they'd be talking in, talking about the old days, basically, where they'd all gone through similar things. How did he react when you needed to know? Well, he was grateful at this point, because we were pretty much not in contact. Like, I'd gotten away, as far away as I could. It was a way for us to talk and for, he, for him to have a son that was actually listening to him. What he also gave you, I gather, w was the comics at the beginning that you fell in love with, too. Yeah. Uh, I was infatuated with comics, and my father uh, saw the comic books were costing 10 cents each, and this was going to kind of put a dent into his budget. Um, and like, so he kind of told me not to buy comics anymore. And near the Diamond Dealers Club where he worked, he could get two or even three comics for a dime, but they were used ones. And as a result, I grew up with a much higher, better level of comic book than my peers, because comics changed a lot in about 1955 or 56. There were these kind of rampages about how comics caused juvenile delinquency, and so they were all censored out of existence. Kind of haze code for comics. Yeah, and so those pre-code comics were terrific, but my father didn't know that they caused juvenile delinquency. He just knew that they were two or three for a dime. And so he was bringing me this fantastic material that helped shape my taste as a cartoonist. At what point did you know that, in a sense, in order to cope with your feelings about your father and what had happened to him, you were going to have to create a work out of it? You were going to have to literally get it out of you onto paper? Um, well, that really started with the first mouse strip that I did in 1971 or two. I was invited to do a three-page or four, whatever I wanted, for a, an underground comic book called Funny Aminals. Uh, the idea was you could do anything you wanted, but you had to use anthropomorphic characters. So Robert Crumb did a story. Most of it was about kind of uh, um, teddy bears having sex or whatever, you know. But um, I, f I was uh, looking at some old animated cartoons from the 30s, fishing around for a way into this anthropomorphic thing. Uh, and I noticed that um, Mickey Mouse and Al Jolson basically were identical except that Mickey Mouse had these kind of round ears on top. Um, and then I thought, OK, I'll do a comic about uh, racism in America using blacks as mice and uh, whites as cats. And then I realized, mm, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I don't know enough about this. <laughs> and uh, um, and it, almost immediately thereafter, something clicked in, which was like, wait, I've got a much more direct experience of racism. And then uh, the metaphor moved around. and was actually, if anything, much, much more appropriate in, in this area. It's, uh, Jews were referred to as vermin in Mein Kampf and after. And um, I don't know, the, the, um, as I began fishing for information more when I first started, um, it would be like uh, the gas in Auschwitz was Zyklon V. It was used for killing rodents. Hmm. It's interesting, because a, a lot of words have been written about what makes Mao's so effective, rather than a simple story. What is your version of that? What do you think the comic gives it that you couldn't have achieved, say, had you been a novelist? Well, um, for one thing, it brings a certain immediacy to the way information enters your head, because I believe that comics approximate the way thought works. It's funny, because most people think of comic book as meaning simplified and simple, and my whole notion is that it's a way, it's a, it's a medium that allows for a great deal of complexity. Did your father see the pictures? He saw the first um, four chapters, I think, somewhere around that, b before he died. What was his response? From this you make a living? <laughs> <laughs> what happens in 20 years from now when your son comes bearing a tape recorder? I'll say, oh, from this you're going to make a living? <laughs>